Okay, Ben. All right. So yeah, let's let's uh, let's talk business. Let's see how it works. Uh, we can see that the forecast comes in the shape of a heat map. Uh, as you can see here, the green cells represent long position, while the red cells represent short position. In each and every square, you have the symbol of the stocks, as we can see here, for example, MHO. And we have the signal that is in the in middle of the square. And we have the predictability that is in the bottom of each and every square. And, and we are using those two indicators, the signal and the predictability, to choose the best stocks from the forecast. Uh, the signal actually represents the predicted movement of each and every asset or the uh, price deviation of each and every asset. And it's helped us to rank the entire forecast from the strongest uh, 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 assets that is located on the top left part of the table and going down to the right until uh, the bottom right of the, of the table that we have the strongest uh, negative signal uh, that we can find it here. For example, it's CORT. Um, the the signal is important and it's help us to rank the entire investment universe and and we know which stock would move uh, stronger or higher or has the most potential out of all of the stock in the in the table or in the forecast. Uh, the second uh, uh, indicator is the predictability. Uh, what Yaron just talked about, uh, the predictability predictability actually help us to understand how good the algorithm can read or can forecast a specific asset. Uh, it moves from, min from uh, minus one to one uh, in its Pearson correlation uh, measurement. Uh, and basically, uh, if we'll see here uh, in the predictability 0, 0.0, it means that the algorithm have like 50% probability uh, of, of forecasting the specific asset. Uh, one represent 100% probability and 0 0.5 uh, represent around 75% uh, of uh, probability that the asset will move to the predicted direction. So we are using those two signals. We're giving more weights to the predictability, uh, but still using those two signals, those, those two indicators uh, to choose the best stock out of the forecast. And we'll see a few examples uh, to make it more uh, simple. And um, before that, we the, the forecast looks like that. You're getting six time frames, as Jaron said. In each and every time frame, you have uh, 10 or 20 stocks for long and 20 stock for short, and, and you have six time frames: three days, seven days, 14 days, one month, three months, and one year. And you can choose this, the, the, the time frame that you want to trade on. And if you're a daily trader, you can use the, the three days or the seven days. And if you are swingers, you can take it for the longer time frames as one month and three months. And I'm going to explain how to use those time frames uh, uh, to your benefit. Uh, but first, let's see a few examples from the last few days, or even uh, 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 that we can see here. We can see the forecast of three days that was generated on the 27th of October, uh, a few days ago, one uh, more than one week ago. And in, the, in this uh, table, we can see the best 10 stocks that the algorithm has suggest, suggested to buy for a long position. Uh, remember, the, long, the green cells represent a long position. Uh, we can see the top. 10 uh, stocks, and to the right, we can see the performance of those stocks in a three days period. Uh, uh, for example, Wolf uh, it made the 7.99% uh, in those three days. MSTR, uh, MicroStrategy, uh, the, the company that holds the most uh, uh, number of Bitcoins in the world, uh, uh, moved the 55 uh, we can find uh, uh, other stocks as uh, uh, NVIDIA, uh, LRMR, uh, that's from the healthcare, for example, uh, uh, PTON from the, uh, that has a, a gene network, and uh, many other stocks, Riot, BTB, that all related to the crypto uh, For uh, in this specific example. And the bottom, we can find the iron first average, the average of those 10 stocks. And in the bottom, we can find the benchmark performance in these three, day, three days, that is uh, uh, on 0.1%. Uh, uh, so the average of this package in three days made 6% compared to the benchmark that barely moves. Um, and that's uh, quite a good result. We can also, uh, we can see here the seven days forecast, for example. Uh, that one was generated on 21 on October. Uh, we can find a variety of stocks from this uh, the entire US market. 
uh, SLNH, BTBT, Riot, we can see uh, 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 a lot of uh, crypto related uh, assets uh, because of what, that we saw that crypto moved pretty hard in the last few days, even the last few uh, weeks. And, and again, this uh, in this specific forecast, the average was 7.27, while the S&P went down by uh, 0.7, uh, which is pretty unique to, to find stocks that are moving against the market and, and making such a significant return uh, in a seven days uh, time frame. In the same way, we have it for 14 days. Uh, 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 same uh, uh, prediction from that from the 15th of October. Uh, we can find a variety of stocks here, and we can see that, for example, uh, uh, Pac B, PTO, and Riot, the PLAX, and uh, MicroStrategy again is also here, uh, are making some significant return of 25, 24, and 28 uh, percent. Uh, again, the average of this forecast was 11%, while the S&P went down by almost half a percent, which is uh, 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 pretty uh, uh, amazing. Uh, in the one-month forecast, uh, again, if you're holding those stocks for one month, you can see those are the performance of those stocks from the 27th of September. Uh, back then, we didn't know what's going to happen in the market. Uh, the, the volatility was high. Uh, but again, the algorithm gave some positive uh, uh, forecast for those stocks, and they made almost uh, 13%. Uh, even the, the, the three months, uh, in the same way, uh, we can find Lumen that uh, we're going to talk about it soon, uh, LUMN, uh, that moves almost 250% uh, in three months. And we can see that this specific stock has the highest signal in the forecast, it's almost uh, uh, it's in the signal here is seven. As we can see, that the other uh, stocks have a signal of 2.5, 2.6, almost three times more than the other uh, stocks that in this specific uh, package. And uh, the predictability uh, also here is getting higher and higher. As your own said, it's been going high, it's going longer on the longer time frames. Uh, the predictability is stronger and better. And we always advise to focus on the best predictability stocks and that's a, it's it's better for optimal results and even one year time frame as we can see here in the 27th of october in 2023 this is the top 10 forecast we can see that the algorithm gave a lot uh, out of those 10 stocks we can see i think around uh, five or four stocks that are bitcoin related mstr agt clsk uh, are uh, related to the Bitcoin. And in that back then, the Bitcoin price was uh, 34,500. We can see it here around the, uh, the this time uh, of, the, of the year. So the algorithm knew how to focus on the, the, the crypto related uh, uh, stocks, Bitcoin related stocks. And those are made like some significant return MSDR that we, uh, I guess uh, most of you know about. And made the more than 500% in that year. It's even better than NVIDIA. And uh, uh, other stocks such as CLSK and HUD also made some significant uh, return. And, and that's uh, that the long time frames examples that we have in the past year. And we are also uh, giving prediction for ETF, the ETF universe, uh, which I really like. Um, we can see here uh, the long time frames of three months and one year uh, ETF forecast. And there we have some uh, variety of ETFs, uh, such as uh, XHB, uh, which is the home builders, uh, the KVE, which is the banks, uh, FAS, it's the uh, XLF, the financial sector leveraged by three. Uh, even the gold mine that was uh, really popular in the last few months, we can see here that the algorithm actually suggested to buy an ETF that follows uh, uh, miners, gold miners, and, and gold itself. And uh, that was really interesting. That made almost 21% in those uh, three months. And even in the one year, we can see that the algorithm gives us the best sector to be in uh, compared to the S&P. And, and the average uh, of those uh, ETFs uh, are hitting the, the, the benchmark by more than 15%. Yes, and one of the most uh, interesting thing about this predictive algorithm that it's also identifying opportunities, uh, basically short selling opportunities. And here we can see several examples. 
First, the first example is coming from March 2023. If, uh, here in this forecast, we can see that uh, the AI algorithm at the ne negative forecast for the S&P index, we can see it in the middle of the heat map. And basically the strongest signals came from the uh, bottom of the heat map. We can find here Silicon Valley Bank, CFB. We can find here uh, First Republic Bank. Um, and uh, this is a short-term forecast. And we can see that after those three days, basically Silicon Valley Bank collapsed during this period. Um, and on the right side, we can see a similar example from February 2020. Uh, from the end of 2000, uh, February 2020, while we also have seen negative prediction for the S&P 500, and also the strongest signals came from the bottom of the heat map, and it was a very good uh, signal, basically to avoid the market during this period or to take to take advantage of this uh, short selling opportunity. Uh, and those opportunities are basically emerging on a daily basis. Even today, uh, we can see that in the bottom of this heat map, we have a very positive day in the market. But despite this positive day, we can see that in the bottom of this uh, uh, forecast, uh, the strongest signal is coming from uh, MSCI, SMSCI, as well as EL. And uh, I can tell you that we see these negative signals for SMCI already uh, for the beginning of October. Uh, it was appearing at the bottom of this uh, heat map. And it's very interesting to see that despite the positive day that we see in the market, SMCI uh, collapsing as we speak. Yeah, uh, SMCI, Super Microcomputer, and ST Lauder, both are the stocks that are uh, going down uh, right now. And as we saw earlier from the S&P 500 package uh, that chooses, again, stocks from the S&P 500 universe, uh, we saw RCL and CRL uh, that also are uh, going up right now in 12 and 6%. And, and uh, the top 20 package that we also saw earlier, which point here, uh, is also appeared here. And we can see here that the predictability is pretty good. 0 0.5, I remind you, it's around 75% probability that the asset will move to the predicted direction. So we like high predictability levels. And we can find those uh, uh, four stocks going up. And, and of course, more than the benchmark of the S&P 500 itself. And uh, the Russell 2000 that right now going up by, uh, I saw it like four or 5% earlier. Uh, 5% already, wow. It's wow. soaring up. And, and, and from this specific universe, the package of Russell 2000, um, is giving us the best stocks from the Russell 2000 universe. And the algorithm provides us those three, uh, EAT, uh, PAC, and CDNA. Those three uh, are, are going up right now and has uh, the highest signal uh, in the package. I took that from the, uh, from the beginning of the, of the, from the opening of the market. I don't know uh, what's the situation right now. I guess it's even a little bit higher, but uh, this was uh, in the opening and, and this was what the algorithm gave us in the seven days uh, uh, time frame from today's uh, forecast. And uh, who of you that uh, were with us in the last webinar, um, uh, we gave uh, two interesting stocks to follow on. And uh, if you recall, uh, from uh, uh, the one month period, we saw e -A -E -O -S -E and MicroStrategy. Uh, we actually suggested to take those two stocks, uh, one because of the highest signal of EOSC and, and the highest predictability of MSTR. Uh, although it doesn't have the highest signal, it has the highest predictability here. And those two moved to 66% and uh, um, almost uh, 7% uh, from uh, October uh, 1st, from our last webinar uh, uh, that we uh, showed you that. By the uh, way, as we speak, MSTR is jumping by another uh, 11%, so it's before the 11%. Uh, yeah. Yeah, added to the 36, and you have some uh, some nice return. 
Um, you ask about uh, PLTR, Plantier, that joined the S&P 500 index lately, and uh, the algorithm also uh, gave it a really good prediction uh, from August 2nd, as we can see here, a three months prediction. And I want to talk about the timing of, of this uh, forecast. Uh, first of all, Plantier here has the highest, uh, one of the highest uh, predictability levels, 0.66, uh, if we are looking at the first raw. Uh, that's is uh, we are combining the highest signal and high predictability. So uh, Plantier is one of the leading stocks uh, from this uh, forecast. And uh, I want to talk about the timing of this forecast. It was generated on 2nd of August, which located around here, uh, which means that the stock actually went down in the uh, after a few days. Uh, if, uh, if we're looking at the chart, but uh, after three months, uh, soared by 60, almost 61 percent. Uh, uh, the timing of this specific, specific forecast uh, was excellent, and uh, so is the stocks, the stock PTON, uh, Peloton Interactive was also was in the top of the uh, forecast for seven day, seven days time frame, short time frame, and also if we're looking at the 24th of October, it's right about here before this jump. And if we are uh, if finishing a one week period ends uh, around uh, around here in the 31 uh, of October also made a 35% in a one week uh, time frame. Uh, another example, Snap, a really popular stock and a lot of people talk about it. Again, the algorithm gave it, or gave it, gave it a really good prediction in October 16. Uh, we didn't see any movement in the, in the in a few days. But after a two-week period, uh, we can see that even after the earnings, uh, that the algorithm gave it a positive uh, forecast, uh, the, the, the stocks jumped uh, in 14%. Uh, percent. Um, and so we have a lot of uh, stocks that the algorithm uh, give a prediction on in a really good timing. And uh, so if, even if you buy stock and you don't see the results right away after uh, one or two days, uh, be patient. Uh, those time frames, as we said, as long as you go with the time frame, the better the predictability. So uh, try to focus on the longer time frames and be patient uh, and let the algorithm do is uh, do the work. And I want to talk about the last webinar. If you recall, in the last webinar, we talked about the best sectors and industries uh, for the next month. Uh, the last webinar was on October uh, 8th. And uh, here are the, the sectors from the level one and level two that we are suggested uh, to be in for in the last in the next month. Um, and that what's that's that's exactly what's going to happen in the end of this webinar. We're going to talk about what's the best uh, geeks level one and geeks level two sector to be in November. Uh, but uh, until then, I owe you the, the results of the last uh, uh, webinar uh, forecast. So the Geeks Level 1, to whom we don't know, is the uh, uh, 11 major sectors in the S&P 500 universe. Uh, XLF, XLK, XLC, if you all uh, know that. Uh, and we suggest it to be on XLC and XLK. And in the Level 2, which is the industries, 24 industries from the S&P 500, uh, we suggested to be on the XSD, which the semiconductors, XME, XTL, and many others. And uh, we also uh, provided the, uh, a short uh, recommendation uh, for the level two. And you can see uh, the results here uh, to your uh, right. And uh, let's talk about the election that we that we uh, experienced yesterday and today. Uh, which uh, uh, Trump uh, actually won and he's the next uh, president. And uh, let's talk about the S&P. Uh, we can see here the S&P movement, S&P index uh, after uh, elections uh, year. And if we are lo looking at this specific point, we can see that after uh, the election, most of the time, the markets is going up as we are experiencing today. And in the next few months, we can see here, if it's zero to six months, in most of the uh, elections, uh, we are seeing a moving up trend uh, of the S&P 500. Uh, adding to that, that uh, that's right now we are in November, in, is, and November is one of the best 
uh, seasonal uh, months to, to trade on, to, to invest in. You can see the returns, uh, the average returns of the S&P in each, each and every month. So we are located uh, around uh, this specific area. Yeah, uh, just, just, to, just to add, we are approaching, uh, of course, uh, uh, continuing with November, but we are approaching also December and January. Uh, look at the performance also in, uh, you know, if you're combining the performance okay. of the market on, the, on November, December, and January, um, I would say that it's very positive uh, from the historical point of view. It's very positive month for the markets usually. Yeah, and we can even see it better here. Uh, we can see the month after elections. Uh, November is one of more the, more the one of the more successful months uh, uh, to be in an election year. Uh, so statistically, we are in a good spot. And and also here we can find. Uh, the the three month returns average returns in November to January as you said are the, the better the best uh, months to be in the market uh, in each and every year.